Greetings, everyone. This is Alex and Matei, and we welcome you to another episode of Downloads Journey into Web3. In case you missed last week's episode, we discussed about the five most important skills that DAO contributors must master. So in case you missed that out, go ahead and watch it. Tell us what we did and maybe leave a like and share it with your friends. Today, uh, we are going to discuss about how one can win in crypto and Web3 respectively and uh, what are the common mistakes and what you can do to fix them. So without further ado, let's dive into today's subject. Before we talk about this more in detail, Matei, in those almost two years of crypto, do you feel like you've learned a lot, that you've mastered some skills, um, and maybe even tell us if you are 100% certain that you understand more than you did before? Well, of that, I am definitely sure. I mean, one year and a, two years ago, basically, I knew, I, I didn't even know 1% of what I know today. But uh, that obviously, I, I learned a lot of stuff. And, you know, the things that we're going to share today are definitely going to help people because it's kind of, you know, like paying your tuition to the market while trading. I think it's the same when, you know, making some mistakes some, so some common mistakes in web3 and crypto overall so yeah yeah definitely and uh, um one of the common mistakes that we see people do when they join the space is that they fall into a project without researching properly and treating crypto like a gambling machine um if you want to look at things like that and uh, the, the fact is that crypto is a gold mine for those who know what they are doing. Um, and therefore, a decent level of education is required for that. Um, you have to learn how to read a white paper, check tokenomics, vesting schedules, the inflation of the token and the emissions, um, learn how market cap works because a lot of people come into crypto without being uh, investors previously in the stock market. Um, you also have to check the centralization levels, check the team, uh, very importantly, look at their CV, what they accomplished previously, and then move to what exactly the project does because it has to be realistic. It has to uh, meet the, some requirements because um, we see projects in the space that are prom promising like wonders and we don't necessarily have the tech for that. So this is one thing that we should uh, definitely keep in mind. Um, then we can look at their community. Do it, is it strong? Um, does the uh, founders team allow inclusion um, and communicate properly? Are they under promising and over delivering? Um, because it's easy to create hype in crypto and like make a token pump. Uh, based on some news, we see these hype cycles frequently. So you have to know how to disclose information because a lot of things can go wrong in the meantime. So founders have to be careful with that. Um, do they actually deliver in time? It, this is something that is also important. Um, it's okay if, uh, for example, an upgrade um, gets delayed. We've seen this with Ethereum, with Cardano, with a lot of um, strong projects in the space. Um, and it's important to, to have patience when uh, things are being built. But it's also, like I previously mentioned, it's, it's important for the founders to communicate. For example, if we look at Cardano and we look at Charles Hoskinson and what he's doing, that's just very great communication. And it keeps the community engaged and it prevented Cardano from dumping like more than other altcoins, for example. Um, and these are just a few things that we have to... Um, look at. Um, and what's imp also important is that once you do this, then you can uh, make um, educated investment in a project in crypto. Otherwise, you are just going to be a gambler. And uh, you know how gambling works is most of the time you are going to get wrecked. Um, what is your take on this? Well, I would uh, sort of conclude what you just said in a more uh, also Web3 related matters and not just crypto, not just tokens. Basically, basically, just don't get over over excited about projects that sound really good, maybe too good to be true, because there are lots of people uh, and teams, as you said, Alex, uh, that have really nice stories about what they're going to do, what they're going to build. Uh, you know, maybe they are teasing their product, they are gathering investors, they are planning an ICO and 
maybe even delivering the token itself, but then your expectations might be completely crushed because of, I don't know, bad execution or plain ragging. So instead, try to keep a cautiously optimistic attitude about such things and hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Because as people know, uh, crypto is full of scams and it's not just about tokens. It could also be about your time. You might, might not necessarily invest money into a project, but you might invest time. You might invest your attention. And so th those are uh, valuable resources that you have and you have to also take care of them. Now, Alex and other don't for uh, in crypto I have is simply don't try to filter hundreds or thousands of accounts through the massive noise in Web3 and crypto overall, unless that's the business you're trying to build. Well, why? Because there are thousands and thousands of opinionated articles and it's hard to you know look through all of them especially when you're a beginner, because you don't really know what, what a good article is and what a not so good article is. Even if you do manage to go through most of them and somehow uh, see what fits you and what is actually a right opinion and what is a wrong opinion, it's mostly a waste of time because there are so many articles. There are staple accounts that post amazing articles that maybe curate this kind of content and heavily uh, reference other people's work. So I would advise you to start there, simply reading more popular articles, more referenced articles, and then slowly work your way up through the references in that said article before going into the kind of Wild West Web 3. There are also, uh, and Alex, you definitely know about this, uh, there are also great Web 3 newsletters that ag aggregate the most important news weekly, monthly, and so on, and also interesting articles they found, and it, it's usually, articles of very high value, but they will not necessarily cover everything. So my advice, just start slow and work your way up towards, you know, more uh, more complex articles, more niche articles. Alex, uh, we've both had the experience with this kind of thing because we, we've had to learn a lot, right? What do you think some, some advice for people who don't really know how to filter through all this noise is? Um, that's a, a, a great um, take that you just uh, put the spotlight on, uh, so to speak. And um, what advice do I give to people? Read A16Z uh, Crypto Canons and look for Crypto Canons overall. These are um, batches of articles and important and valuable resources that you can check out in order to understand more about the industry. And this one that I mentioned is a good place to start. So definitely you have to know how to research things uh, because then you are just going to waste your time and have biased opinions and uh, then don't like be somewhere in a limbo where you have some trust in the industry, but at, uh, at the same time uh, you fail to understand some things because you lack the proper knowledge. So just start from zero and climb your way up in complexity and understand the history of crypto and um, all these things, because without without this background, is going to really it's going to be really hard for you to stick around. Um, another uh, thing that I see a lot of people do, especially in bull markets, is they are marrying an altcoin, like Benjamin Cowan says. Um, a lot of people still don't like Bitcoin. Um, we see this maximalism in crypto, whether it's uh, ETH uh, maxes or BTC maxes or uh, maybe gold maxis or whatever. Um, the truth is that Bitcoin is king and uh, most altcoins offer gains based on hype cycles and uh, important updates like uh, mainnet upgrades, uh, checks listings, uh, VCs investing in the project. Um, and uh, it's important to learn how to profit on those um, because it can turn you into a great short-term investor um, and we see like when the bear market comes, we see like most of the altcoins dropping minus 95%. And um, it's not, it doesn't feel good. And this is something that we can avoid. Uh, we have to learn how to cut risk um, because that, that's what smart money does. And if you are not following what the smart money does, you are just going to get dumped on and get wrecked and maybe have to hold the bags until the next market cycle uh, without guaranteeing, without no, no guarantee that your altcoin will recover its initial price where you entered or maybe a previous all-time high. So most of this can turn out to not be good investment. Um, 
that's why learning to categorize, for example, altcoins uh, into blue chips and learning um, and understanding uh, if the token has any, any utility is valuable. For example, you might say, OK, I'm going to invest in Polkadot or maybe Chainlink. But you have to look at does any value occur to, the, to this token? That, does the, um, um, the project uh, create create an environment where uh, the, some of the value and demand returns to the token because for some of this uh, that might not the case might not be the case for example polkadot where each parachain and um, project that launches on polkadot has their own native token um, and it basically takes the demand away from dot to that token and uh, some of this might not have um, those big gains that you might expect, like on other investments in the space. Um, how do you feel about this, Matei? Have you learned this the hard way, or did you like uh, learn as you went uh, in your went out further in your crypto journey? I definitely learned this the hard way, and I think most of us did. And I feel like what you what you said is you know, uh, a general truth about the entire Web3. So not just tokens, not just Bitcoin and altcoins. It's also maybe staple NFTs like CryptoPunks and, you know, Bored Ape Yacht Clubs and so on. It could also be about, you know, social media platforms. Uh, it could also be about newsletters and so on. Because, you know, there are going to be some bigger ones, some more important projects, and then some smaller ones. Uh, you know, it, it's not bad to direct your attention, to focus your attention on some smaller projects because they can end up being hidden gems in any any type of way. So maybe financially, maybe uh, it's just worth your time for friendships, for uh, partnerships, for mentorship and so on. But do keep in mind that, you know, the best ones out there are the best ones for some reasons and don't, don't discard them. Now, another thing I, I see, Alex, is people kind of being isolated from the rest of, uh, well, crypto Twitter and other people in Web3 and crypto overall. And I think this is not the right mentality to have in such a young and, you know, kind of friendly in industry, let's call it, because it's important to keep an open eye to collaboration. Uh, you know, very few players can say that they are confidently successful on their own. Uh, let's include, I don't know, Chainlink, uh, Yuga Labs, uh, bankless and so on, but there are not many very high, very huge players. So most people are actually trying to build their own thing. And I would say if you enjoy someone's companionship, maybe it's someone you trade with, maybe it's just someone you found on a Discord channel and you just clicked and started talking more, you could definitely try to build something together. So don't don't stay away from that. You know, maybe if some, someone's building something interesting, send them a DM and offer your availability to them as well as showcase your skills and the intentions because this might earn you a place at the table. And all of these things that I talked about uh, cannot be uh, earned while being alone. You know, you also have to be part of a team. You have to make friends. You have to go see people, to meet people. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard and... Honestly, I think that people who do not make friends or do not try to make friends in crypto are the ones who are very likely to leave, you know, in bear markets or during during uh, bad times. Alex, uh, a few weeks ago, we talked to Eugen about going to Web3 blockchain related events, right? We've had him on our Twitter space series and we talked about this specifically. Now. We know that uh, bull markets and bear markets go away, but the friends you make along the way don't. So uh, what's your take on this, on, you know, uh, gathering up with people and doing things together instead of going alone? Man, that's uh, something that we discussed uh, about in the previous episode as well. And networking is such an important skill that we have to master in crypto. And um, we, come this, we come with this mindset and... Um, uh, we are kind of shy of interacting with people because uh, when you DM like influencers or in Web2 and people wrote email to them or whatever in order to start a collaboration, uh, most, or, most of the time you wouldn't even get a scene or a reply or whatever. And um, this can happen in Web3 as well, of course, but uh, 
what I've seen, what I've personally seen is that people are way more friendly and more willing to make bonds because especially in bear markets, because there are not a lot of people around and it's in their mind, they know that if you are still here in, in those times, you are here to build and you're passionate, passionate about the industry. And uh, it's kind of rare to find those people around in those times. Um, there are fewer people going to events, to uh, conferences and so on. And it's it's much easier to build those relationships in a bear market. So this is definitely something that um, everyone should, should look at. Like, uh, don't be shy if you have a great idea or you want to start a collaboration with someone. Just DM them, show them uh, what you wrote about in Web3, what you built, whatever. And uh, hopefully you will get a response. And uh, most of, uh, what I would also advise on is uh, don't use this formal style that we've seen in Web2. Like uh, go for the friendly route, like wrote a GM or some stuff like that. Um, I think like yesterday I saw a video, a video of Vitalik rapping uh, on a scene with some crypto guys and it was so funny. And um, I was thinking how much um, does that tell about uh, our um industry and the people that are around man it, it they are just fun and they are crazy and i just love that about crypto honestly um i think another thing that we should learn and uh, this is a lot a, a thing that not a lot of people are doing because they are just limiting their sel themselves to crypto um maybe until it's too late and this is learn the macro like you can't be a good crypto investor unless you have a deep understanding of the markets, uh, economics, uh, at least a little bit, geopolitics and monetary policy, especially in this day and age uh, where we see those high levels of inflation. Uh, we see um, governments like probably um, facing like the inability to pair their debt. This will be a, a, a catastrophic scenario, but it's definitely pl plausible. Um, and you and you have to understand all of this because crypto, um, the crypto market is highly tied with what is happening um, in the stock market and the stock market reacts to what is happening around the world. Um, this can be even a war that is affecting the markets. Um, I don't know, like uh, Jerome Powell going out and saying that they are going to in, uh, keep increasing interest rates. You have to understand all of this. Otherwise, you will just wake up in the morning and be like, uh, why is the market 20% uh, down today? Um, you have to know when, when the Fed meetings are taking place. Uh, if Pelosi, for example, plans to go to Taiwan um, and all, all, all sorts of stuff. Um, it's high demand, I know. It's, it, it requires a lot of investment um, of our time. But I think overall, knowing what is happening around the world and how markets work and human behavior is a very, very valuable resource for everyone. Definitely, Alex. Uh, I think that's, that's absolutely true. And it's going to be hard for some people and easier for others because it, you know, it also ties into what you studied, into what you're interested in. So it's not going to be necessarily easy, but definitely keep an eye on these kind of things because it, they are impacting the world as a whole and crypto even more. Now, some, some other thing I, I see people doing is being shy and not, not interacting with, uh, you know, the, the tools in Web3. I, I would strongly advise everyone to see, use all the tools you see. If you're into DAOs, use DAO tools. If you're into NFTs, go ahead and search and use NFT tools. If you're a developer, go play with any kind of things you see around because uh, we talked about, first of all, we talked about uh, this in a recent episode about airdrops and, you know, playing with such tools might reward you at, at some point with tokens. But more importantly than that, considerably more importantly, is use these tools to get accustomed to the space and to, you know, what people are doing. Because if you want to, well, if you want to have considerably higher chances to win at crypto, then... Uh, there are several tools you you might refrain from using because you simply are too shy. This could be Dune Analytics because it has to do with SQL and queries. You might not be someone who knows that language, but don't do that. Just try to go check out some dashboards. You don't have to code yourself. Uh, get and 
if you do want to code a bit, don't be afraid to get your hands a little dirty. Discover governance, data analysis, NFT rarity tools, as well as, I don't know, writing and publishing tools such as Mirror XYZ, even coding tools, and just understand how they work and who they are for, and see if you can leverage them to your advantage now or in the future. So just interact with the space, don't be passive, try being as active as you can, because it will give you so much more insight into what's going on and how people are, uh, you know, what people are working on, how hard or how easy it is to do something. And, and it just gives you a very good overall image. Alex, we have both used lots of tools, uh, but I, I'm going to ask you specifically about, um, you know, DAO tooling. How do you think someone, because it's not easy to, to meddle around with DAO tools, because they are quite hard to, to understand. How do you think uh, an average a beginner DAO contributor should go about using these kind of tools? Oh, that's a great question. Um, first of all, don't test a lot of this with your main wallet where you got most of your funds because uh, you are interacting with a lot of contracts and we've seen uh, bad things happening uh, even to top 10 blue chip crypto projects. So this is definitely something you should keep in mind. And yeah, just be curious, just interact with things. Uh, even, even if you don't know how they work and what buttons to press, again, if you are using a test wallet, uh, it's going to be fine. Um, most of these don't have a friendly interface and um, maybe construct will fix this <laughs> and um yeah just just be curious and test things and interact with them um because it's going to prove valuable um in the coming years and um what we are i think the way we should look at things now is that we are some kind of beta testers for um the technology that we are going to use in the future and uh, just look at things like that and um yeah it's, it's just a great thing that people should do. And it helps you understand more about uh, how different tooling works overall and why things happen a certain way. Otherwise, you're just going to be confused and have a lot of questions. Um, another thing that I see a lot of people hang on to is that they marry a model. And the greatest example, the best example that comes to my mind is um, plan B. And there in his model and the way people uh, create a narratives around that and they had a lot of belief in it and the hard truth the harsh truth is that nobody knows where we are going um then again i'm coming back to um the previous um, mistake that I, I talked about um you have to take into consideration uh, a lot of things in order to make an, or get an idea or where we might uh, be heading, not just technical analysis, because crypto is so volatile. Most of these don't even work and can um, off, can create some blind spots in your thinking because you might see an indicator that says we are going uh, up, but uh, on at the same time, Oh, uh, you have Jerome Powell that is going to come up next week and talk some stuff. And um, it might what he says might count more than than that indicator. So uh, be wary of that. Um, look at models. I don't say you should not check those and even technical analysis, but don't put don't put all your money on that. This is uh, even why a lot of people get wrecked when they do leverage trading. Um, and uh, this is something that you can avoid, uh, right? So how, what is your take on this, Matei? Have you made this mistake? I personally uh, definitely did it and married the model until it was proven otherwise. And then I learned um, that I should remain more objective on these things. Did you? Well, uh, personally, I didn't actually, because uh, I know there are so, so many models and uh, this is something uh, Benjamin Cohen says. I, I don't think it's necessarily his quote, but uh, he, he does say it. It's uh, all models are wrong, but some are useful, right? So yeah. you, you can count on them to give you some sort of indication of where the market could be going, but definitely don't count on them on pinpointing the exact uh, moment when the top will be or the bottom will be or how to uh, place your trade. Just You have to find confluences in all different sorts of models. So you're sure that multiple levels align and that's when you have more confidence, more possibilities of you know, doing a great investment. 
Uh, Alex, I want to share my uh, my last uh, don't thing for uh, winning in crypto, and that is uh, tunnel visioning yourself. You know, tunnel visioning your learning, tunnel visioning your interactions. We see people do that because let's say you're a developer and you might only be interested in interested in developer things. You might be niching yourself on uh, protocol DAOs and more specifically uh, decentralized exchanges. Nothing else uh, interests you and you're going to do that all the time. I highly advise against that because there are so many interesting things in the space and you will most definitely find something that might not normally interest you, but you will find it interesting. So I'm going to, to you know, uh, take an example here. Let's say you're a fan of decentralization. And you, in this case, you don't necessarily have to hang around the Bitcoin and or Ethereum and the communities. You might, for example, find interesting music NFTs because they cut the middleman and they bring considerably more revenue to the artists themselves that would otherwise just get pennies on the dollar. Otherwise, uh, let's say you're into uh, NFTs. Uh, don't only look at JPEGs. You might also have to take a look at writing NFTs pioneered by Mirror XYZ because they might be promising and they basically do the same thing, but they, they did uh, innovate in this uh, writing and publishing area and are uh, uh, valuable for both collectors and creators because uh, bottom line, this is not the automotive industry we're talking about, but rather one that has little to no barriers of entry and exit. So uh, definitely do that, uh, hop around projects, hop around different tools, see what you like, don't tunnel vision your learning, and you will, uh, I think you'll really have a surprise with what interests you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, related to this, um, I, have you seen how much the floor, floor price on some of those uh, blue chip NFTs has dropped? um in the recently and even the volume on open sea like is minus 95 plus percent i think and it's just crazy um that these things are happening and we see those uh small bubbles that are occur occurring in crypto and definitely when you are just niching yourself on uh one thing you are going to be possibly exposed to that so definitely something to keep in mind and um, because we talked about this I also have a more touchy uh, don't um, that might not that with with which a lot of people might not agree and this is don't listen to crypto influencers um, and here I'm going to this BitBoy crypto because when you join when you join the space and hear me out on this um, when you are going to type on YouTube and just uh, want to find more about crypto, what videos are going to pop out first? Those shilling, clickbaity, crazy thumbnails, um, videos that are just shilling projects and sharing financial advice. Um, although they disclose at the, most of them that they are not giving financial advice, they are sort of manipulating people that do not understand a lot about the industry and they are just it just creates a dynamic where people form into a project of course i agree that uh, it's not the influencer's fault because he is not literally putting uh, his hand in your pocket and taking your money away but um it's still something that you should be wary of um they will they will all sort of give all these arguments that our project is going to the moon um, and not talking about the downsides or maybe the risk that are associated with that. And it just creates in your head this narrative that, yeah, yeah, this project is going to go to the moon. Like there is there is no scenario in which this can fail, right? And then it happens, the, ha, the otherwise happens, like the, the opposite thing. And um, I this is something that happened to me when I joined crypto. I did not necessarily watch BitBoy Crypto, but uh, I watch like channels like Jaren and Y Crypto and stuff like that. And then I found Benjamin Cowan, which set me on the right path and uh, helped me understand more about how these crypto projects work. And uh, just be wary of that, remain objective. Um, look at uh, if they have an affiliation with our project, if they are advisors or if, I don't know, just pay attention to those things because um, you can easily lose your money and miss out on a lot of things. This is the, the thing that I hate the most about crypto influencers is that um, 
they make a lot of people lose money and they miss out on a lot of things that are just so cool about the industries and the fun things and stuff like that it just makes them go away because they live with this impression that crypto is a scam which is not <laughs> um i will ask you for your opinion on this and then we can wrap this up because we are at the 30 minute mark so what is your take on crypto influencers I completely agree with you. Uh, I also follow Jeremy myself, so I am, you know, I, I know what you're talking about. I think there are lots of people who uh, still do that. And, you know, new beginners, I are definitely attracted to uh, catch thumbnails and, you know, colorful thumbnails and all that. Uh, but you did mention at the beginning that some people might not agree with you. Uh, I think not so many people would not agree with you. I think uh, here in crypto, we're kind of in agreement. But there are, you know, the, the masses, the, the people who are not interested in learning more that will continue uh, following these kind of influencers. Yeah, absolutely. And why I say that is because some of these influencers have made money and have had good calls. Like if you look at Jaren and wife, for example, because we mentioned him, uh, he had a lot of board dates, right? And he, he entered early in the project. And that was a good investment, uh, even a life-changing investment, if you ask me. And uh, there are some people that made some money following their advice, uh, but this is just luck, right? Uh, you don't you have no guarantee on that and neither did the influencer he just made a good guess on that so uh, now i think we can wrap up the episode uh, guys tell us what you think about these do's and don'ts um what else we should have mentioned maybe give or take on that and um, we are going to see you on the next one until then don't forget to leave a like subscribe and share this video out and uh, yeah, see you guys.